In this video, I'll show you how to create this dimensioned multi-view drawing in Autodesk Inventor 2019. First, you'll need to download a couple of files and open them in Inventor. We'll need our drawing template, Inventor drawing file, and our dim thing one, Inventor part. To get those, you can go to the Google uh, Drive folder that is either uh, linked in the video description below or on our Google Classroom assignment. Uh, you'll see in the folder Dim Thing 1 Inventor Part File and the Drawing Template Inventor Drawing. We also have a PDF you can click on, and this shows you that finished example. Uh, if you want to use this as a guide or to check your work, uh, it's here for you to see. Okay, you are going to right click on dimthing1.ipt and download it. That'll go to your downloads folder on your computer. Uh, also, right click drawing template, download that. You'll want to open both of those files into Inventor. Once they're open, make sure that you do a file save as and save them to your My Documents so that you know where they are. Right? Drawing template will also do a file save as and save that to your My Documents. At this point, we're ready to move on. If you don't have your files yet, pause, take care of that, open them up, and do a save as an inventor. And at this point, we're ready to go. Okay. So, in order to start with our multi-view drawing, uh, we first have to put in our views of our object, right? The first thing we're going to put in is the actual front view and top view and side view and isometric. To do that, we're going to click on base. So please click on base of the top left. You'll see that as it starts, I have a front view of this object sort of sitting here in the middle of the screen. Uh, the scale looks correct uh, for this. One to one is good. And uh, with that set, I'm going to click and drag this view sort of down and to the left a bit. Something maybe kind of like there. That's good. And once that front view is in a good spot, now I can start without clicking anything. I can start moving my mouse up. And you see as I keep it directly above, uh, I've got a little vertical line. That shows me I'm lined up, right, with the front view, and I've got a little dotted rectangle uh, that's going to show me where this next view might go. Uh, so I want a top view directly above the front view. So when I get to somewhere around here, I'll click once. That sets up that top view. I'm going to go to the right of the front view, maybe somewhere around here, and I'll click once. That'll set up my right side view. And then up above the right side and to the right of the top view, somewhere in this corner, we'll click one more time. And that'll set up our, our 3D view, our isometric. With those four views set, I can come back over to our drawing view uh, box here and click OK. And it just went through and rendered those four views of this object. Now, on the example, uh, you might notice that our isometric view is, is uh, full color. Looks more realistic, not just the line drawing. So let's do that first. As you bring your mouse over to the isometric view, you'll see, not when you're directly over a line or anything, but when you're sort of near it, you'll see a little red dotted box around it. And when you see the dotted box, double click. That brings up these sort of view options again. And over here under Style, we're going to click Shaded. OK. So now we have a, a nice shaded full color isometric. With that set, now we have to start adding all these dimensions. We have a lot of dimensions uh, showing important information about this object. How tall parts are, right? How long parts are, how wide parts are, and even uh, the locations of, of features, like the location of the center point of this circular hole. So all of this important information needs to be included on our drawing. Uh, to start, we're going to click over to our Annotate tab. Click Annotate. There's a whole bunch of different options here for adding notes, dimensions, information to these drawings. 
uh, we're going to use the dimension tool. So up at the top left, we're going to click dimension. I'm just going to zoom in quick on the uh, on just the front view for this. Okay, a couple quick rules on uh, on using our dimension tool here. Uh, in the creating a part side of Inventor, we were used to selecting whole lines from the from the middle of the line or so, right? Uh, but in this mode, we're going to set up dimensions by clicking endpoints. That usually works out a bit better for us. So when we set up, for example, the uh, height of this part of the object here, instead of clicking on this line, I'm going to click on the endpoint here and the endpoint here. And now I've got my dimension following the mouse cursor. Uh, second tip, we're always going to start with the smallest dimensions closest to the part or to the view of the part, right? And then the larger dimensions will be further away. So for example, I'm starting with the shorter bit, right, with a 0.5, and then uh, we'll end up with, with a larger one in just a second as we go for the, from the bottom all the way to the top up here. Uh, third, uh, you'll notice as we bring our dimension out, sometimes it sort of clicks into a spot and goes kind of dotted. So there's sort of predetermined distances away that these dimensions will want to just sort of click into a spot. So we'll use those as much as we can to give us good distancing uh, for our dimensions uh, so that there's sort of a uniform spacing away from the views. Okay, so I did. Let's just start that one more time here. We click dimension. We click the one corner endpoint, right? Other corner endpoint. The dimensions following the mouse. Get to the first spot here where it's going to sort of go dotted and click. I'm going to click that mouse. That brings up the edit dimension box. Here's a spot where we could put in special notes, little things that would be important for somebody to know, but uh, right now we don't have any special notes. So we're just going to hit OK. For our second dimension, let's do the overall height. So we're going to click, again, this bottom corner, but now all the way up to this top corner. Now as I move this out, you'll see it's showing one inch from the bottom edge to the top edge. I'm going to bring this out until I get it to click, right about there. I'm going to click my mouse. And again, no special notes. Okay, first two dimensions done. And those are the only two height dimensions that we need. So right now, height's all taken care of. Next up, uh, still on the front view, uh, we have a couple of length dimensions that we can do. Uh, we can say how long uh, this top part is from here to here. We can also say how long the whole thing is overall from here to here. Right. So starting with the smaller one, we'll click this corner and click this corner. Bring it up until it gets to that Nice spot there, and click the mouse. Hit OK. And then this same corner to start. Now this far corner over here for the overall length. We'll bring it up till about there, and click. OK. All right, so far from just the front view, we know that this height here, is 0.5 inch. We know that the overall height from the bottom edge to the top edge is one inch. We know that the uh, length of this top portion here, this length here, is one inch. We know that the overall length of this entire part is two inches, right? Okay, with all this, we've got height, we've got length. We don't have width here, or, or like depth, maybe if you want to think of it that way. Okay, we don't have this width here or this width up on this upper part. So, uh, let's do that on the right side view. So to get over to the right side, we're still in the dimension tool, and starting with the smaller dimension, we'll click on this corner up here, and this corner, bring it up, and click. Okay. Again, start same corner. Now click this corner over here, and we'll bring it up till it sort of snaps in place and click. Okay. 
So we have our one inch overall width and half inch width just of this upper part here. Okay, we're mostly done with dimensioning. We have one view left, and on this view, really the focus is this circular hole, right? We have lengths, we have widths. You can't see height on this top view, so we don't have to worry about that, but we already have lengths covered, we already have widths covered. So on this view, we can just focus on the hole. There's three main dimensions we've got to worry about here with the hole. First, how big is it? And two, where is it? Right, where is that hole in relation to the rest of the part? Uh, so first, when the diameter is easy with the dimension tool, we're just going to click on uh, the circle itself, right? The, the perimeter of the circle, the arc of the circle. And we'll start bringing this out a bit. And click to put down that dimension. No special notes for this, so we'll click OK. We have a diameter of 0.75 inches, right? Three quarters of an inch. Now, where is that? Uh, for this, we can uh, position this circle uh, relative to the edges of the part. So to do that, we're going to hover around the center until we see this little green dot right in the middle. That's going to be the center point of that circle. Click the center point, and we'll click this edge. And we'll bring down our dimension until it wants to snap in place there. So we know that this center point of the circle of the uh, circle here for the hole is one half inch away from this edge. And if we click the center point and this edge again, bring it over this way, we know that it's one half inch away from this bottom edge. All right, with those dimensions taken care of, uh, we're set on the dimensioning portion of this. There's only one last little bit of details to uh, take care of, and that's in our title block. Uh, so here, we want to add your name uh, in under the drawn bit who drew it, and let's add an assignment name in here under title, right? Uh, so to do that, over on the left, so like way over on the left in this model, uh, stuff here that we normally mostly ignore, right? <clears throat> Under sheet one, uh, you'll see custom here. If it's not already expanded, we can click this little arrow, bring it down to the point where you see field text, okay? Double click field text. And if it doesn't work, like that didn't work, uh, we've got to get out of the dimension tool. So you can do that by right click and hitting OK or by hitting escape on your keyboard. Now that you're out of the dimension tool, come over and double click field text. Here we have edit property fields. We see author, your name, uh, title, assignment title. Let's fix that. We're gonna click up here for I properties, this little button. And we'll click over to summary. Where it says assignment name. Why don't you put in Multi-view, drawing, one. And then for author, you know, put in your name. Also under project here, uh, you could switch creation date over to whichever date you're completing this. So I set this up. It's uh, set up for March 4th, 2020. Um, you could use the calendar and pop that over to today's date. Once that stuff's so all set, uh, hit OK. You should see that that information changed uh, in this Edit Property Fields box here. We're going to click. You'll also see that it, uh, it changed here. If, uh, if the window isn't sort of blocking it, you'll see it's drawn and uh, title all here. We'll hit OK, and you are all set. This multi-view drawing is complete. Uh, now you've learned how to create a dimensioned multi-view drawing in Autodesk Inventor 2019. Uh, don't forget to save your work with a file save, and also to turn this in, please take a snipping tool screenshot of this page, the whole thing, right? 
And that is what you will turn into Classroom. All right, good work. We'll see you in the next video.